Hi guys, welcome back to another calculus video. In this particular video, we're gonna be talking about special trigonometric functions and how to integrate them. So far, you ought to have a pretty clear idea on how to integrate really simple trig functions like this one, for example. We know that this antiderivative, the antiderivative of cosine of x has to be sine of x. And that's because whenever we take the, the derivative of sine of x, we get cosine of x. So that part gets checked out properly. And it also applies to something like this, where we have secant squared of x dx. So we want to ask ourselves, what function do we take the derivative of and get secant squared? The answer to that question would be tangent of x. So these are pretty simple. But what about ones like this one that don't really make too many appearances on elementary antiderivative tables? Maybe it's one that we haven't committed to memory. So we have a special technique for dealing with things like this. And you may have noticed kind of a pattern when looking at certain integrals and deciding how to solve them. Some of them require a little bit of manipulation before integrating. We, our goal is to manipulate a function so that it's a form that can be easily integrated. If not, sometimes you get something that you can tell right away it's easy to integrate and you don't really have to manipulate anything before you go. But this one, it's gonna require a bit of manipulation. Specifically, we're gonna to wanna to break this down so that instead of a power right there, we wanna break it down so that it's just cosine with a degree of one. And we're gonna need some of those trig identities to help us with that. So specifically, we're gonna need one of our double angle identities. It's going to be this one right here. Cosine of two X is equal to two times cosine squared X minus one. So we want to rewrite our integrand so that we're able to use this to our advantage. So I wanna start by adding one to both sides and then I wanna divide everything by two. So what we get is we get cosine squared x equals one half cosine of two x whoops, plus one. So let's just take our integrand and instead of writing it like this, we want to write it like this. Simple substitution we can do pretty quickly without too much trouble. So we can move the constant outside and we get cosine of 2x plus 1 dx. So what we could do is we could maybe break it up into separate integrals. We could make it like this. We have 1 half cosine of 2x dx plus the integral of just one half dx. So for this first one, we know we're gonna have a u substitution. We're gonna set u equal to two x, and then the derivative of u with respect to x would be of course two, the derivative of two x is two. Rewriting this yields this, we get du equals two dx. So I can see that we do have the dx right here. What we don't have is that two hanging out anywhere on the inside of the integral. So we want to divide both sides by two. So we get dx is equal to one half du. So let's rewrite it using this new information. We have one half and then another one half cosine of u du. And then the second integral is pretty straightforward. We know this is just going to be one half x. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this anymore either. So I'm gonna continue it along the top of the second half of the screen. This is going to be one fourth integral of cosine of u du plus one half x plus c. So this is pretty straightforward. We know that the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So now that we've done the substitution this way, we wanna treat this as if it were just cosine of x. 
and we know that the antiderivative of cosine of x is just sine of x. Except this time we have sine of u. And then we have this. And we're done. We don't see any integral signs anywhere. We don't see any dx's or du. So that's how we know we're finished. This is the general solution to the problem. But let's talk about having it maybe a different power of cosine of x. If you need to write this down and maybe walk yourself through the steps to retain the knowledge a little bit better, I highly recommend that. Just maybe pause the video and take as much time as you need. Because we're going to move on to a slightly different variation of this function. Instead of cosine squared, I want to make this cosine cubed. And you might think that this wouldn't make things too different than what we had before. You might be thinking, well, we can probably just use that double angle formula again. But I'm thinking this one might be solvable in an easier way. I think there might be even a, a even better method to use in this particular situation. So for starters, I will, it's always in your best, I mean, it's probably a good bet to break this up whenever you have a trig function to an odd power it's typically a safe bet to break it up into an, even, an odd power and an even power. And the reason why this works out pretty well is because this is gonna end up being a U substitution problem. We're gonna rewrite this function so that we have the derivative of some function also appearing in the integral, which makes U substitution just a natural choice for something like this. So for this one, I actually want to use the Pythagorean identity, one of the three we have. So I see a cosine x, no, I see a cosine squared x in the integrand. So solving for that thing, we get one minus sine squared x. So rewriting the integral gets us this. And then it may not be obvious why this is helpful, but let's just distribute first and see why this works out really well. So we have cosine of X, and then we have minus sine squared of X times cosine of, of X. So from here, I want to break it up into two separate integrals. The first of which would be cosine of x dx, and then the second of which would be negative sine squared x cosine of x dx. So we've taken kind of an unusual function, something that we're not used to seeing, let alone integrating, and we were able to rewrite it in terms of something we do know how to integrate very easily or two things we can integrate very easily. Of course, the antiderivative of cosine is sine of x says always. And then we have a u substitution problem. We have the co derivative of cosine is negative sine, or we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. I want u to be sine just because we have the sine to the power. If we had cosine to the power, we'd let cosine be u, but because sine is the one with the exponent, sine is the function we're going to allocate to be u. u is sine of x. Of course, the derivative with respect to x of this would be cosine of x, so du equals cosine of x dx. So let's plug everything in we get negative u squared du. It works out nicely. We have the entirety of du in this block, cosine of x dx, and we have just u squared because this is sine of x squared. So this is pretty simple to integrate. We know we just want to treat u as if it were an x. So we're gonna make this u to the third power divided by three.
So we have two constants of integration, one for each integral, but we could combine them into just one constant. One third u squared, u is sine of x, so this would be sine cubed of x. Oh, I said u squared, I meant to say u to the third power. We have one third u to the third power. So we get one third sine cubed of x, and then we combine the constants, getting us just this. And we're finished with this one. Wasn't too bad. Now, let's try one more problem. Let's try the integral of tangent of x. So we know this isn't one that integrates easily. We know that it doesn't really have an elementary antiderivative, at least not in the way we're used to seeing it. So we might go to the trig identity table and see if there's anything useful. And we don't have much to work with. You know, this is actually more of a u substitution problem than anything else. And what I mean by that is, well, first we want to rewrite it. We want to use the reciprocal identity where we know tangent is equal to cosine divided by, no, we have sine divided by cosine, that's what I meant to say. And this is a lot nicer than what we started with. And the reason for that is we have a u and we have a du. u is cosine of x. And then du, of course, du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x would be negative sine of x. du is negative sine of x dx. And you might be wondering why we chose cosine and not sine to be u. Well, it's because when we are to rewrite this integral using this new information, we'll have du on top and u on the bottom. So this is perfectly valid. It's perfectly valid to have something with a du on top and some function or some expression on the bottom. If it were the other way around, we could not do that, at least not with any methods we're gonna be learning in this class. We're not gonna be ever integrating something with a du on the bottom. This is just more advanced than anything we're gonna encounter in this class, but it's just a bad idea to set it up that way. We always want du to be in the top. So now we have du over u, and now it's just a question of what function do we take the derivative of and get one over u, or I guess one over x would be similar, similar structured problem. So that would be the natural log function. We know that the natural log of x is one over x, and that the natural log of a function, natural log of u, is going to be what we use the chain rule we take the derivative of u, u prime over u. So this is how we take the derivative of a natural log of a different function, a composition of functions with natural log being the outer function. So we could similarly, similarly I can't talk this evening, we could write similarly like this. We can make it du over u, and notice that that's exactly what we have. So we know that if we were to anti, take the antiderivative, we would get the natural log function. So this would just be natural log of cosine of x plus c. And there you have it. That is how we use substitution to take down something that looks nearly impossible when you're seeing it for the first time.